cannot believe that I'm here. This is the most magnificent kitchen that I've ever seen in my life. Every appliance that you need, the pantry is fully stocked. Every detail is impeccable. And seeing Master Chef across the line is like, it's incredible. Yes! Woo! I am just so, so excited. You have to pinch me because Gordon Ramsay has chosen me yes. to be worthy of the pin on my apron to represent him and his name. That's big shoes to fill. So I have to bring it every single week. Welcome to the most famous kitchen in America. Thousands try to make it where you're standing, but you are the talented 24 that made it. One of us gave each of you an apron. It's on you to prove which judge identified America's next master chef. And with that title comes some incredible prizes. Not only will you be crowned best of the best, you will win the cool quarter of a million dollars. That's amazing. And the greatest prize any home cook can hold in their hands, the MasterChef trophy. The talented eight individuals that I gave an apron to I will be mentoring you all the way to the finale. Do me proud. If I gave you an apron, you got the heart and you got the passion to go all the way. And you also have me as your mentor. If I gave you an apron, you're being mentored by one of the world's most successful and prolific <laughs> restaurateurs. I expect at least two of you to make the finale. You guys are currently standing in the most amazing kitchen in all of America. You'll have access to the finest ingredients you could ever dream of and the best equipment anywhere around. We've set you up for success. The best stoves, the best ovens, the best equipment. Vikings, they are incredible. So there is no room for any excuses. Yes, sir. Right, it's time for your very first Mystery Box Challenge. On the count of three, lift your boxes. Oh my God. One, two, three, lift. Oh! Jeez, oh. Jerry. Oh. Everybody's thing is different. Interesting. Now, you all have an ingredient that is native from your home state. An ingredient that screams where you're from. <laughs> Perfect. We want to see you turn that incredible ingredient in front of you into a dish you, your family, and your hometown can be really proud of. Yes. The person with the very best dish of this mystery box challenge will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge, which, believe me, is going to be very difficult. You have just one hour to make us one incredible dish that shows us that you belong in those aprons. Your one hour starts now. Let's go, guys. Come on. Out my way. Thank God I wasn't wearing heels. Showtime, showtime, showtime. Blood oranges, they're five second rule that doesn't apply. I'm all orange because I'm Florida, the orange state. Shrimp, squid. Being in Miami, there's all these Latin communities battling over whose ceviche is the best. And I think, okay, I'm gonna do a ceviche. I'm gonna use a lot of seafood, and I'm gonna make sure that the orange really wraps around the proteins. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Where, where is chicken stock? Since I'm from China, I got pork belly. So I'm making the breast pork belly, cauliflower puree, and the caramelized beets. Okay, let's go. I cook in this dish in China like at least three times a week. Watch the step. Let's go, let's go. I got this. Oh, sexy as well. Let's go, people. Wow, this is it. For me personally, one of the most exciting nights of the year because it's our first Master Chef Mystery Box Challenge and it sets the tone. There we go. We've given them each one ingredient that represents their home state. I'm sorry. What are we looking for in those ingredients? So, first of all, to pay them respect, Joe. More importantly, give us a little modern twist on what you grew up with. Let's go, Texas. I'm looking for big, bold flavors and something that's a window to each one of these home cooks' personal style. If I mess up this dish, I'm not going to get it. Welcome back to Texas. 
have to be able to be versatile and take an ingredient that's thrown at you and execute excellent food using an ingredient you might not have chosen yourself. Let me not cut myself. <laughs> Yeah, baby. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I got beautiful California spot prawns. And even though I'm from California, I am making a New Orleans-style barbecue shrimp. It's a family recipe. My grandpa, he came here from Greece, and they settled in Louisiana. And I can't wait for the judges to taste this. I am from Houston, Texas, and today I got a Texas T-bone. I feel like I'm in my zone. I got to bring everything I've got. I am not letting go of that Gordon Ramsay pen. I'm from Michigan. Michigan is known for their cherry, so I'm gonna make cherry stuffed French toast with cherry cream cheese with a cherry reduction glaze and chocolate covered bacon. Growing up as a kid, my dad would always make a big spread. My favorite was the stuffed French toast, so this is a tribute to him. Ron. Yes. What are those initials on your apron? They're your name, Erwan Sanchez. All right, so explain to me the ingredient that you have there that you're celebrating. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. So we have walleye, okay. beautiful white fish. And so my plan is to crush it in some spices. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do sort of my mom's home-style potato. So it's usually turmeric, paprika, and mustard seeds. For the sauce, I'm going to get coconut moili. Mm -hmm. So it's a southern Indian coconut-based curry, something that my mom makes me every time I'm home from dental school. And it, it really speaks back to me. A lot of pride involved, right? Yes, yeah, chef. I'd like to hear that. Good luck, Rahan. Okay, Thank you, stick sir. with it. 28 minutes remaining. Right, Stephanie. Yes, Chef. Remind us again, where are you from? I am from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Now, the ingredient that screams New Jersey, what yes, are they? The lovely Jersey tomato. What are you doing? So, I am doing a tomato frittata. I'm gonna do a little bit of basil, goat cheese, shallot, some garlic, red bell pepper, a little bit of jalapeno for heat. Nice and spicy, kind of like me. I had eight aprons to give out, and you are one of them. Yes. So if you're going to give me a frittata on week one, I need to be the best frittata ever. I got you, Chef. Good luck. Guys, just over 25 minutes left. <laughs> hey, Matt. Joe, how's it going? All right, Team JB. How Good you doing, brother? You. I'm doing all right. What ingredient did you get from your home state? I'm from Iowa, so I got corn. What's the dish? Uh, I'm going to do a sweet corn puree. This is a succotash with some corn in it. I'm going to do a chicken with skin on. And I also have some uh, pan roasted carrots, and there's actually crispy chicken skin. This is, this is chicken skin? That's the chicken skin, yeah. That's a nice idea. It's, it's, a, little, it's right? a little greasy. It's a little greasy. Good luck, Matt. Thank you, Jeff. Let's work some magic. Beauty, what's shaking? Hello. So you're representing where? Remind me. I am from Raleigh, North Carolina. And I got sweet potatoes. Give us a little insight to your dish. In North Carolina, me and my friends, we go out and we have brunch, you know, all the time. So I'm going to be making a sweet potato biscuit. And I'm going to add my Mexican flair to it by uh, doing chorizo and a jalapeno hollandaise. Right. Uh, and I'm also going to be doing a sweet potato hash. I think that's a beautiful thing. I think it's going to tell a nice story. Best of luck. Don't let me down. I'm counting on you. You're one I of my won't. stars, all right? All right. I'm going to keep shining bright. Yes, get it, girl. Get it. Oh, this cheese tastes really, really good. Ashley. Yeah, chef. Sure. Remind us about the ingredients that you had on the mystery box. I had some beautiful Florida oranges. So I'm taking it with a little Cuban vibe today. Okay, good. So I'm doing a pork tenderloin with fresh mojo with a spicy orange mustard here. Good. And there's going to be some chopped up bacon that goes into mash. Careful, chef. Careful, chef. Make some fire. I just changed my hair. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank it cost you. a fortune. Emily, tell me the dish. I'm from Wisconsin. Cheddar cheese. Cheddar it's, cheese, I mean, fantastic. It's in everything. We're doing a baked mac and cheese using a little wow. bit of gruyere and cheddar. Broccoli stems, just as my favorite part of the broccoli. Crispy skin I have chicken to say thighs. Something. This is one of the most beautiful chicken thighs I've ever seen. Thank you. Just between me and you, come here. Are you the smartest cook in here? I think I come with the most wide breadth of knowledge. The smartest contestant mm -hmm. with my apron. Smartest Coached judge. by the smartest judge. We got this thing won. Good luck. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Last six minutes. Here we go. Uh, oh, my god. It's perfect. Thank you. Wow. Fascinating. I mean, some incredible sounding dishes. Emily and Ashley looking very strong. I feel a little bit more kind of fresh. Yeah, I'm really concerned with Stephanie. She's doing a frittata. She's doing an omelet in a mystery box? I can make them in five minutes. Sa, how you doing? Um, I'm feeling good about my flavors. I'm a little bit concerned about Sal. He was given the Santa Barbara spot prawn, and he's making a New Orleans dish. Well, yeah, it sounds really confused and scattered. 
90 seconds remaining. Come on. We should definitely be getting the food on the plate. Got it. We want to taste your steaks on those plates, guys. Come on. Last minute. Come on. Taste, taste, taste. Let's go. Get a beautiful portion out there. Let's go. Oh, so good. 10, Five, 9, 8, eight seven, 7, 6, 5, five 4, four three, 3, 2, two one. 1. And stop. Hands in the air. Joe, Aron, and myself watched you all very carefully across that mystery box challenge. Some of you really impressed us. Each judge will bring up one of the talented cooks that they gave an apron to. The first dish tonight is from a home cook that I personally put into this competition. They made comfort food with old style flavors. Please step forward. Emily, bring it up. Wisconsin is in the house. I mean, I think being in the top three in the first challenge is definitely putting me up there as someone that is a major competitor. And I think everyone should definitely watch out. OK, Emily, so you're from? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And your ingredient was? It was cheddar cheese. You're kind of a cheese head, aren't you? I am a cheese head to the max, packer backer. <laughs> packer backer. All right, what's the dish? So we have a broccoli cheddar mac and cheese topped with crispy chicken thigh. We have a little gremolata breadcrumb on top, crispy broccoli tops, and then a white wine cheddar sauce on the side. Mac and cheese, you made cheddar. Did you put any other kind of cheese in there? Gruyere. I have to say, Gruyere and cheddar are two great cheeses of the world put together. And you can really taste that, because they do work well with each other. But what's really impressive here is that everything is cooked. Like this chicken thigh is about as textbook as you can get. Moist in the middle, crispy on the outside. I think you're a smart cook. This is a smart dish. Very, very impressive. Thank Emily, you. Thank you. Miss Emily, do you feel that out of your fellow competitors here, you're more informed food-wise by virtue of what you do? Yes. Food is my life. So food anthropology, now I work on the research side of the food service industry. What you did here that's so expert is the idea of cooking down that broccoli in such a way that it gives that beautiful, almost sulfuric taste to it, which is great. The cook on the chicken is expert. I think maybe cut that chicken in such a way that it's a little bit better incorporated. Mm -hmm. Because chicken's going to run out before the pasta does. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, I hate to say this and give Joe any kind of credit, but <laughs> he definitely saw something in you right away. And it's evident in the overall execution of this dish. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Chicken's amazing. I mean, that's how we cook chicken uh, in the restaurant, uh, is to that standard. I love what you did with the presentation. It's like it's out of a gastro pub. Wow. Very cool, very hip, very modern. This dish is a 90-minute dish, and you've made it in 60 minutes. So you've really thought about it properly. When you think like that in this competition, you're going to go far. Great job. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. So the second dish that we would like to dive deeper into, a dish created by a home cook that I brought into this kitchen. Tonight, they showcased an impressive display of culinary technique. Please step forward. Farhan. I'm on cloud nine. Wow, the top three out of 24 people. It's, it's incredible. I think it shows the other competitors that, hey, I'm not just a dental student. I'm a serious chef, and I know what I'm doing in the kitchen. All right, so Farhan, you're representing Illinois. Talk to me about your dish. So I had some fantastic walleye. So I made my own little spice blend using the long peppercorns, uh, crusted the fish, pan seared it, and then uh, it's my mom's homestyle potatoes. And then the bottom is a coconut moyoli sauce. The spice rub I created myself, um, it has a lot of fennel, mustard seed, cumin, coriander. That's why I really wanted to shine through. I got to say, you did such an unbelievable job getting a crispy skin outside of that fish. By seasoning it with such a generous hand, you were able to blossom all those spices. They became alive. You allow them to be harmonious, but not overpower very delicate fish. That's the genius of this dish for me, personally. The potatoes are great. They're kind of cooked down. They're a little rustic in nature. I think the sauce is very pungent and very strong. I mean, you could have toned down the amount of it. Yes. And allowed it to be a little bit more brothy. But overall, I think all the components are strictly you, strictly unique. 
and that's why I gave you an apron. Thank you, chef. It's an honor. Why so much spice? I find comfort in spices, so I use spices as my paint colors, and the mm -hmm. plate is my is my canvas. Fish, stunning. You know, it's got that heat. It's moist. It's crispy. The sauce, delicious. And I love those potatoes. Could be a little bit crispier. You know, because you want that sort of texture. But here's the thing. You've got such control over your cooking, but also you've got that level of finesse as well. You know your spice. You are an original spice boy. <laughs> Brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Wow, what a start. The third and final dish we'd like to taste is from the home cook that I gave an apron to. This dish had a lot of flair, great harmony. I'm looking at my dish, and I know it tastes amazing. I want this so bad. Please step forward. Please say my name. Please say my name. The third and final dish we'd like to taste from tonight's Mystery Box Challenge. It's from the home cook that I gave an apron to. This dish had a lot of flair, great harmony. Please step forward. Ashley, thank you. I'm happy for Ashley, but I'm disappointed I'm not in the top three. I just really wanted to impress Gordon, so I have to step it up moving forward. Ashley, describe the dish, please. So I got those beautiful Florida oranges. And the dish is a mojo pork tenderloin, which is a herb, garlic, and citrus marinade with mashed sweet plantain. And the sauce is orange juice, yellow mustard, dry mustard, and orange blossom honey. Mm -hmm. And then the mash? So those are sweet plantains that I mashed with some creme fraiche, bacon, some parsley, orange juice, and orange zest. Wow, delicious. Pork tenderloins, amazing. I love the sear. I love the way you sliced it. The glaze and the oranges is just delicious. Pork and orange goes hand in glove, and so it's a lovely combination. But it's more than the glaze, because it's got that spice, it's got that heat. It packs a punch. Thank you, Chef. When you start to shine this early on in the competition, not only does this send a strong message to everybody standing behind you, but for me, it confirms that I was 100% correct handing that apron. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Amazing. Great technique in the sauce. The pork loin is perfectly cooked. The colors are appealing. If I came to your house for a dinner party and you gave me a plate of food like this, I would be happy. But if I went to a restaurant in Miami and was paying $100 for dinner, I would probably expect a little bit more. So I think, okay. Ashley, your evolution is going to be seeing how you can evolve the plate and make them a little bit more restauranty, if you will. Okay. Because it's master chef. Yes. Not master home cook. Correct. Got it? Yes, Joe. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Three great dishes. Emily's dish was really impressive. Good, but just I like uh, Ashley's. Ashley, you know, the oranges, I mean they stuck out. Ashley's plate was too sweet for me. Emily and Farron from Yeah. A little bit too spicy. It's true. Three incredible, sophisticated dishes that really shone beautifully. But there can only be one winner. Tonight's winner, congratulations, goes to the dish that was cooked by Ashley. Congratulations. <laughs> You're safe from elimination. Congratulations. Thank you. Now take your well-earned place up on the balcony. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> I wanted to make Gordon proud. And winning this first challenge validates the pin on my apron. Please return to your stations. With me as a mentee, I'm going to be high risk, high reward every single time. Each one of you were given an apron by one of us three. We handed out those aprons because we believe in your ability, your passion, and your potential. And tonight, three of you let us down. Each judge now has to identify just one home cook that we give an apron to to go into a three-way battle for survival. 
the home cook that I give an apron to. You let me down tonight because you didn't use your time wisely. Sid. The home cook that I felt let me down, this dish was overly sweet. The plating was a mess. That home cook is Alicia. The home cook that I gave an apron to put so much grease on the plate that it was inedible. The home cook that will be cooking again tonight is Sal. What can I say? Really let me down. Sid, Alicia, Sal, all three of you, come up to the front. Everybody else, head up to the balcony. I am disappointed, because I played it safe. With the French toast, I've always been a fighter, and I feel I kind of let my family down. I'm definitely going to step it up and just show Chef Aron I deserve this apron, and I'm going to make him proud. For survival tonight, I want all three of you to make your version of this classic all-American dish, a dish that America was built on. Tonight, I'll show you how I make steak and mashed potatoes. Steak and potatoes may seem simple, but they are surprisingly difficult to get right. I make a mistake tonight, and it is a giant disappointment. But before I show two of you the door, I'll give you an insight to how I perfect mine. We season both sides, every ounce of that steak, pan on, piping hot, tablespoon of oil in, roll it around, a couple of cloves of garlic, fresh thyme. You've got a great sear on the steak, 90 seconds each side. Once you've got a great sear, we go in with the butter. Tilt the back of the pan so it cooks that line of fat and bake. Oh, my God, I'm super geeked right now. Out she comes, and then from there, we let that sit, and now we're going to start the sauce. Touch of butter in there, put those shallots in there. From there, did lays a touch of cognac. Yes. <laughs> From there, a beautiful beef stock, a tablespoon of demi, a little hint of cream. That will thicken it up. Now, mashed potatoes. Make sure that once you've cooked the potatoes, you steam them and you start mashing. Now I'm going to start working in my cream and my butter. Finish off with some fresh chives. And you've got the most amazing, beautiful mashed potatoes. And in my house here in America, that's exactly how we perfect steak and mash. Now, tonight, it's not three cook and one goes home. Three will cook, and only one will be safe. That was close to the elimination challenge. And knowing that two of the three cooks are going home, odds are definitely not good. Thank goodness I'm not down there. I'm glad I'm not you right now. Tonight, it's not three cook and one goes home. Three will cook, and only one will be safe. Sal, Alicia, Sid. We want you to make your version a steak, a mash, that can keep you in the competition. Now, for two of you, this is your last 30 minutes in the MasterChef kitchen. Got it? Yes, Joe. Yes, your 30 minutes starts now. Back home in Michigan, I cook steak and mash for my husband at least once a week. Cheese, cheese, cheese. So I definitely feel like I'm going to nail this and prove to the judges that this girl can cook her ass off. Time comic. I definitely think I have an advantage because I grew up cooking steaks out over an open fire out on our ranch. So I know I got this in the bag. Let's go, guys. All right, so Gordon, what needs to happen in these 30 minutes in order for them to be successful? Tonight, I want their version. Steak and mash, but you know, evolve it. In the simplicity of this challenge, you have three of the most difficult MasterChef problems. Raw wine in the sauce, undercooked potatoes, and temperature on meat. The pressure's immense tonight. 
There's only one person staying, so the pressure is really on. My heart is pounding. It's like an adrenaline rush. It's something like I've never done before. I've jumped out of planes and had less of a rush. Let's go, Alicia! Come on. I ain't giving up, guys. I want to be here so bad. I'm in it to win it, no matter what. And nothing's going to stop me, because I'm the next master chef. Sorry, boys, but this girl is here to stay. 21 minutes remaining. Here we go, baby. First thing, start the mash. The secret behind a great mash is cut the dice smaller so they cook quicker and then let them steam. I got it, guys. From there, get that cast iron pan on and get it absolutely piping hot. Take the steak out, season it beautifully. Got to get that steak in. Gordon, what does a medium rare look like for you? A great sear, top and bottom, sides as well, so there's no visible white fat anywhere. Ooh, there we go. From there, start the sauce. The sauce can go a million directions. Cream based, brandy based, mushrooms. 15 minutes remaining. Halfway. All right, Sal. I'd hate to lose one of my team members on this first elimination test. What are you doing to personalize it? So I'm going to do a uh, Parmesan mash. I'm going to throw a little bit of butter and cream in there. We're going to make a sauce with a little bit of wine and bourbon. Wine and bourbon together? Woo! Uh, you know, uh, I guess I'm going to go the wine. Learn and listen. Good luck. Yes, sir. Right, sit. Give me an insight to your steak and mash. What are you doing? I'm making steak with a uh, golden Yukon mashed potatoes. My father would always do his creamed mushrooms and onions, so the bed for that steak is going to be reference to my dad. You can do this. I want to see the Sid I met when I give you the apron. Thank Please. you, Seth. Thank Let's you, Seth. Keep it up, Sid. Put some love into that food. <sighs> Alicia, how you doing? I'm doing perfect, Chef. So give me a description of your dish. My husband is definitely a meat and potatoes kind of guy. He loves steak. So right now, I'm making a, a mushroom and onion glazed steak with a loaded mash with heavy cream butter, chives, bacon, and made with a lot of love. All right, so look, I haven't given up on you at all, OK? Yes, I believe in you. I know you're going to follow through. Yeah, I'm ready, right. yep. Don't give up, OK? You're doing great. Smells good in here. Yeah, it smells great. 10 minutes remaining. Come on, Alicia. Alicia's steak is out. Sal as well. Sid's steak is out. Looking good, Sid. Yes, Sid. Yes, Sid. Yes, Sid. Yes, Sid. Go, Sid. Oh, Sid's okay, oh, flaming up some brandy. <sighs> All right, Sid, this is what? That is hot. What is it, though? You're falling asleep here? Oh, I'm uh, not falling asleep. No, you're not falling asleep. That is going to be my sauce. That's your sauce? Yes. You want it that syrupy? Uh, I'll thin it down a little bit. Sid, do you have the stamina to do this? Yes, sir, I do. Uh... All right, Sid, good luck. Thank you, John. Coarse salt. Wow, fascinating. So I'm a little bit concerned about Sid. OK, so... So Sid has made like a uh, <sighs> cognac sauce, but over-reduced. It's like a syrup at this point. So kind of going against everything that you demonstrated. Potato masher. Sid looks flustered. Potato masher? Sid's running a little bit behind. Sid is just kind of discombobulated. He's running to the pantry and grabbing different things. Where is the potato masher? It's not looking good for Sid. I cannot find a potato masher oh for the life. Oh, my God. Oh, damn. This is salt. Don't miss Camp Master Chef. Join us this summer for fun-filled culinary camps featuring cooking lessons, exciting challenges from the show, outdoor activities, and surprise visits from contestants. Don't miss out. Register now at CampMasterChef.com. It's a salt. So I'm a little bit concerned about Sid. Sid looks flustered. Potato masher? Sid's running a little bit behind. Uh, uh, on. <laughs> Poor Sid. He is a little frazzled. Where is the potato masher? Get it together, or you're going home. I cannot find a potato masher oh for the life of me. Oh, dear. There it is. I like that. Last three minutes. That's still plenty time to finish off, guys. Fresh chives, fresh parsley. Make sure that mash is not too wet. Beautiful. So Alicia right now is in front of both the guys. Yep, absolutely. She has a fighting she's spirit right now. You can see yep. she's animated. She's moving quickly. Sal, unfortunately, made a stupid mistake. Great job. Didn't flambe that sauce. Pretty strong. Pretty strong. Come on. Last 
minute to go. You got it, Sid. Looks tasty. Start thinking about your plating. Taste everything. We're looking for a classic American steak and potato dish, one you would serve to your family at home. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and Let's set. Go. Flavor, flavor, flavor. All three of you, well done. Very carefully, bring your dishes down to the front, please. Let's go. I'm so happy with my dish. I know I perfectly nailed the sear on my steak, but please, baby Jesus, let it be medium rare. Two people are going home. I have no room for error. All right, Sal, first things first. You are wearing my pin. I'm not here to save you or anyone for that matter. All decisions will be informed by uh, the opinion of the three judges together, OK? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's the dish? I made a pan-seared steak with a red wine reduction sauce and some Parmesan cheese mashed potatoes. Mm. You caramelized the steak well. Too bad you cooked it a perfect medium instead of a perfect medium rare. The sauce for me is too thick. You're definitely missing some technique on the potatoes. The flavor of Parmesan is good, that's a plus. But when it starts to taste like, like glue, that consistency means that you let the starch build up in the potato itself too much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The cook on the steak, I mean, we're talking a minute from being medium rare, so I'm not going to really take you to task on that. I'm going to tell you where this needs a lot of work and improvement. I don't like the sauce at all. It's very reduced. It's gelatinous. It needed to be developed a lot more by cooking the shallots out, and it just tastes like it's not developed yet. It needs to be realized over time. And it's just hard to overlook that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I don't know what to be down here. Alicia, describe the dish, please. I have a seared steak with a mushroom onion sauce with a mashed potato uh, loaded with bacon, scallions, and salt and pepper, cream, and butter. And that's perfect. Yes, thank you. That is beautifully done. So the base of the sauce, what's in there? I started off with butter then garlic, thyme, mushrooms, onions. And then I added red wine, a little bit of beef stock. And at the end, I added cream. So steak is delicious, really good indeed. The color of the steak is beautiful. However, for me, visually, a little bit scrappy on the plate, a little bit loose in terms of the fat. So big no-no there. I wish you'd plated that with some finesse. It's just a shame. You didn't dress it a little bit better. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Alicia. Chef. Mm. The cook on the steak is spot on perfect. I think the potatoes are great, but the, the garnish is a little confusing. I feel like it's one of the basing elements that you should have omitted and not put on your presentation. So my concern is that sloppiness, because it, it can be that make or break. I want to make you proud, Chef. I see so much finesse in the way that you cook the steak, but I got to really think about, is that enough to keep you in this competition? Thank you, Chef. Sid. Yes, sir. Food photographer. Yes. What's the dish? This is a sauteed herb crusted steak with a uh, beef stock, sauteed onions, and mushroom sauce and a little bit of golden Yukon mashed potatoes. So it should be red in the middle, kind of the same as hers, nice crust on the outside, pink with a dead red center. Correct. What this steak looks like could be the difference between you staying here in this competition or heading home. Let's see. Wow. Sid, what this steak looks like could be the difference between you staying here in this competition or heading home. 
Let's see. What do we got? Ooh. Wow. Another perfectly cooked medium rare steak. It's rendered properly, and you do have a nice crust on it. But um, there's onions and mushrooms. You see, these you cooked separately from the pan sauce, right? And the consequence of that, your sauce is broke. Um, your potatoes are a nice try to achieve what Gordon did, but they lack salt and are lumpy. So some pros and cons said. It's one thing that needs. You know it, I know it. Pepper. Steak's cooked nicely. It's lacking seasoning. The sauce is broke. The mash is OK. But as always, with anyone that I give an apron to, or anyone in this competition, I just want more. Every time we cook in this kitchen, cook for your life. I understand, chef. Thank you. Thank you. OK, you three, please come around to the front. We each gave one of you an apron. So this, for us, is a very big decision. We need a moment. A steak and mash, a staple. No, they should have all nailed it, but they didn't. Alicia's dish, the sauce bumbled a little bit. Yeah, but she really did the best job with the cook on the steak. Yeah. Sal just doesn't listen. I think there was just so many technical problems with his sauce and procedures that it all kind of fell apart in the end. I mean, we asked for medium rare. The other two delivered medium rare. He didn't. The cook was proper on Sid's steak. It was medium rare. He got that right. You could go back to that steak any time throughout dinner, and it'd still be juicy from right. top to bottom. Yep. But he forgot the most important thing, the seasoning. Only one of these home cooks will stay in the master chef kitchen. Tough decision. Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, let's do it. My heart's beating fast. Yeah, look. Man, tough first night in the master chef kitchen. We're going to lose two home cooks tonight that we have given aprons to. Sal, tell me, do you think you're staying, yes or no? Yes, chef. Sid, are you staying? Yes, I am staying, Chef. Alicia, are you staying? Yes, Chef, I'm here to stay. Alicia, you have made mistakes tonight. But here's one thing you have got right. You are staying. Take yourself up into the balcony. Alicia. This feeling is just amazing. Like, this takes the cake. Thank you, Jesus. I know that my children in the daycare are shouting for Miss Alicia, Miss Alicia. And I just know that my family back home will be so proud of me. This time gone from them is not wasted. This is all for us. Sal, Sid. Not a good night for you, too. The dish just didn't work in the end. Sorry. I'm very humbled to be able to make food for three wonderful judges, and it's been an honor. I'm going to continue mastering the way I can cook to at least absorb what you've taught me here. Sal, Sid, don't stop cooking. Thank you, Chef. Gentlemen, can you please leave your aprons at your stations? One love, fam. Let's go, Sal. Let's go, guys. Let's go, Sal, Sid. It's disappointing me that I didn't go a lot further here. Just sometimes pressure hits you, and everything breaks down. But this has inspired me, so I'm not going to stop. I'm too young to stop. Good night, gents. Good night. Yeah, Sal. Nice job, Sal. I know I'm a great cook, but I clearly still have things to learn. So it stinks to be the first one out. Man. Next time. But I'm going to keep going after the dream to start a supper club. And this is just one step in my very long journey.
next week. Crabs. <laughs> a Gordon Ramsay masterclass. Oh my gosh, wow. I have no idea how I'm gonna do this. Leaves the top 22. <sighs> shell-shocked, and... This is the reason I gave you the pen. While some home cooks claw their way to the top... Ah, there we go. Others... I feel like I'm gonna faint. ...crack under the pressure. We hate to see people in our own apron... ...walking out the door. One potato, two potatoes.